for the Home Office in the United Kingdom. The Home Office in the United Kingdom has told the, the Manx authorities that uh, they don't want people to be birched anymore. And the Manx well, they're the sovereign authority. Why don't you just say, well, please yourselves, you don't like it, too? Well, uh, it's Aren't not... they got the bottle? It's not quite... Aren't they got the power? It, they have the power, but they perhaps don't have the bottle. It's not quite as simple as that, obviously. So you're saying they're not tough enough? Um, uh, well, that is basically it, what it comes down to in the oh, end. Oh, well, perhaps they should have been birched more as children. How do Peter? Well, I'd like to talk about nihilism and um, the hysterical and art. What does nihilism mean? Well, it's the belief in nothing. Well, that'll take us all day to talk about. Well, not really, no. Uh, we live in a, a da-da junk culture. Hold it. You're talking about something now. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm talking sorry, about you're talking about something. No, you're yeah, talking about something. something you're talking different. about something. To talk about nothing, you do this. Well, I, d I said I was going to talk listen, about nihilism. Listen, no, listen. Well, you said it was nothing. Listen. To talk and, about... Uh, listen. To talk about nothing, you do this. There. I just talked about nothing. How do Harvey... Hello, Alan. Um, I'd like to talk about the ferry, what sunk. Um, you know, as if you go out in a car with a ball tyre on and kill somebody, you could get done for manslaughter or something like that. But um, there was, like, near enough 200 people or whatever killed on that ship, and someone must have been to blame. So, like, why was nobody prosecuted? Someone must have uh, done something wrong. Well, first of all, it's very difficult for the British government to prosecute anyone because it didn't happen in British territorial waters. Yeah, but... So, like... I, don't, I don't know Belgian law, but there has been an inquiry, and the inquiry that has taken place has more power than a British court in these matters. The British court could only do them for any crimes they've committed the inquiry can actually cause the company to suffer great financial loss. Mm. And that's why there hasn't been. Yeah. Well, that's the answer to the question. Ah, this is the life. A bargain holiday, thanks to the late booking desk at National Travel World. Oh, we saved ourselves a fortune. Not only that, but they gave us a microwave for only £7 to £9. Pounds. I could have had 10% discount off any item over £100 at Centro, but I'd rather have the microwave. Oh, so that's why you're reading a cookery book now, is it? Well, you won't be doing any cooking for another two weeks. We're on holiday. Oh, yes, I will. I brought the microwave with us. If you want a last-minute bargain holiday plus a microwave for only £79, pounds, book before the 30th of June at National Travel World's late booking desk. Please listen to my ditty. It may not be very witty, nor even slightly funny, but it will help save you money. For me, from cradle to grave, I aim to shop and save. I buy out, I need, for next and out indeed. There's meat and veg and cheese and picks and booze and clothes and cards and sweets and pigs and pet food and household things. So shop and save a load down Blackpool's Waterloo Road. In the market they call new, and over at Road, the M2. Thank you. Poetry in prices. From the new market and M2 market. It's the place to come, where shopping can be fun. The new market, Waterloo Road. A far, far better furniture store. Edmondson's of Blackburn, a far, far better furniture store for lounge, dining room and bedroom furniture, for famous names in quality carpets, for all home furnishings. Edmondson's offers choice, Edmondson's gives first-class service and Edmondson's guarantees value for money. All round a far, far better furniture store at Darwin Street, Blackburn. A far, far better furniture store, Edmondson's. I'll do Elaine. Alan. Hello. Uh, I'm just ringing to thank you for your photograph. It's all right. Oh. Well, you have done. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, to Alan. Bye. Oh, I know who you are. <laughs> I know who you are. Do you? Yeah? Yes. If I got a bye 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 yeah. He's a lunatic. He's a lunatic? He scared the crap out of me. <laughs> That's <laughs> the aim. That was the aim. Well, That's it worked. <laughs> I was driving. Am I allowed to mention it? I won't yeah. mention where, because I don't want you to be identified. But I was driving down a motorway. Don't a... mention any names. No, I won't. Please. I was driving down a motorway within the last week, and this police car was on the lump. You know the lump at the side of the motorway? This police car was on the lump at the side of the motorway. And I whizzed past it at 69 and three quarter miles an hour, like you do. 
<laughs> and after a while, it caught me up and flashed its light, and I thought, oh, crap, they've got me. I didn't, because I was doing about, I was doing about 95 before that, till I saw it on the hump, <laughs> and I slabbed the anchors, and I, well, that is it. Never mind, they must have saw me beforehand. And he flashed me down and he said, can I have an autograph for my wife Elaine? Which I thought was a pretty good swap, actually. And he's delivering you tomorrow. Anyway, tell him thank you very much. This all happened, of course, within the last week on a motorway somewhere in Britain. <laughs> all right, Elaine. Thanks very much. Give him my regards. I will. <laughs> Bye. How do, Peter? How do, Alan? Yes. Um... On the croft, on the croft, where we used we to play. play pitch and toss. And the coppers Copper came and chased us away. away. Give, my regards, give my regards to Ali Boardman. How do he wrote it? Monica. Hello, Alan. Hello, Monica. Um, the other night, you spoke to a lady that had done a sentence in uh, prison. And you mentioned the thousands of homeless in London. Well, don't you think that they're through their own fault? Because I do. A lot well, of them. Ah, well, a lot of them might be. I'm not prepared to get involved in whether it's a lot or some. Certainly some. Whether it's a lot, I'm not sure. I mean, where do you go when you've nowhere to live? There are people who have nowhere to live, you know. Yeah, but there are people that have nowhere to live. What if, what if a young man, for example, can no longer stand living with his parents? It does happen. Where does he go? Leaves home, can't get a flat, he's not got a job. Can't stay very long in one place because they stop his dole. Where does he go? Well... Lives in a cardboard box in the back streets of London. Is it his fault? Is it society's fault? Is it his parents' fault? Well, I don't know, I mean... Uh, you don't know? You've said you know. Well, uh, a lot of them, I mean, want a wayward lay way of life, don't they? They want what? A, a, a wayward... Uh, way of life, don't they? I don't know that a lot of them do. I think if you offered the majority of the homeless people, and remember there are thousands of them in London, and I'm not just talking about the street people, I'm talking about those people who live in bed and breakfast places because they have no accommodation of their own. Those people also are homeless in the true sense. All of those people are entitled to some kind of life. Those that want to live on the streets, tramps, vagrants, if you like, let them get on with it. But those who would prefer not to but have no choice, they are homeless. They are victims of something. What? Maybe. What about all the people that they are slowly but surely throwing out of psychiatric hospitals? People who've lived in psychiatric hospitals for 20 and 30 years. They've got nowhere to go that they can tolerate. Nowhere to go that they can cope with. So where do they end up? Where does everybody end up? In London. Whose fault is that? Well, I don't know, actually. Well, but until I mean, you do know, I, stop I, condemning them. Well, I'm not condemning them You're all. I'm, their I'm, own... con I'm condemning, I think, a good half of them. What I mean, do you base, it, what do you base your all. statistic on? A good half, you said. What do you base your statistic on? How did you come to the term a half, a good half? Well, I mean, some of them are main no, organic. Listen, no, excuse me. Here's the question again, Monica. Try to answer the question I've put to you. You said a good half, you think, deserve it. OK. Where did you get your statistic from? Well, I think... Half Where are you getting your statistics from, I asked you. I, don't, I know what you think. You've told me. I know about your prejudice. I know about your view. Now tell me where you get your information from. And well, what are you basing it? How did you come to the decision it was a good half? Well, I mean, there's drug addicts. Yes, we know what the there is. Monica, Monica, I'll on. ask you the question again. I know you don't like the question because it rubs up against your prejudice, but here it is again, madam. How do you come to the statistic a good half? Well, it may not be a half, but I mean... OK, how much, how much do you think? A well, a percentage. Half a percent? Um, well, well, yes, a percentage. Half, one percent. One in every hundred deserve it. The other 99 in the 100 don't. Two in a... OK, two in every 100. I mean, some's on drugs. Look, can some we just... Look, I'm sorry. Monica, Monica, you have said so far, all the people who are homeless, it's their own fault. Then you changed it and said most. Then you said a good half. Now you're saying a percentage. What percentage? 10%? 20%? 5%? 30%? 41.3%? Well, I should say, a quarter percent. A quarter? Twenty-five percent? Yes. What are you basing your statistic on? 
Well, um, what um, are you basing your statistic on? What are you using to decide it's 25%? I'll tell you what you're using, Monica. You're, you're using a guess. You were using a prejudicial guess. In other words, Monica, you want to believe that they deserve it. You've no evidence to back it up. You've nothing to support that point of view. But your nice, twee, little, comfortable life allows you to believe it. Because if I you... Because, Monica, because, Monica, if you believe it's their fault, you'd have to do damn all about it. Good night. Good night. You have been bezicked. Imagine yourself at Lake Garda, the largest of the Italian lakes surrounded by picturesque towns and villages. Imagine ten gorgeous days of excursions to Venice, Italian Dolomite and Vipertino. Well, this could come true with Avalon travel for just £169, including cross-channel ferry and top accommodation. Ring for details of departure dates on Bolton 398-788. Can you believe it? A complete luxury fitted bedroom of real quality for just £350 plus VAT. It's true at M&S Fitted Bedrooms of Preston and Bolton. For £350, we'll design, plan and fit two wardrobes, one bridging unit, two corner displays and two bedside cabinets. Do not buy a fitted bedroom till you've visited M&S Fitted Bedrooms. 342 Blackpool Road, Fullwood, Preston or 156 Blackburn Road, Bolton. But hurry, this offers for a limited period only. Open Monday to Saturday, 10 till 4, Sundays 12 till 3. Do you own a video library? Are your tools tingling rather than ringing like a crazed grandfather clock? Then contact Priory Video Wholesale now. They're bigger, they've more choice, which means they pass their savings on to you. Lease, hire or buy all the leading video titles and get some money in your till. Ring Priory Video Wholesale now on Wigan, that's 0942 495 033. Wigan 495 033. Priory Video, the leader in home. Access welcome. When you think about cars, it pays to think of John Wilding. After the successful introduction of Lada to Lancaster and Morecambe, John Wilding now brings the exciting Citroen range to his Banbury garage in Morecambe. The complete BX range, including the best selling diesel in the UK, is in the showroom now. Come in and marvel over these fun examples of engineering brilliance. See Citroen at John Wilding's Banbury garage, Westgate, Morecambe. When you think about cars, to think of John Wilding. John Wilding! Hello, Gary. Hello. Yeah. Do you remember I was talking to you the other night about door-to-door -door, door -door canvassing? No, but go on. Do you not remember me? Well, I talk to a lot of people about a lot of things. You'll have to be more specific than that for me well, to I, identify you. I talked to you a couple of nights ago about door-to-door -door canvassing. Well, you've said that. What do you want to say now? Well, you finished the conversation um, by telling me a story about the fact that you, uh, signed up for a pension plan. No, I was about to and then stopped. Well, yeah, you, you stopped because somebody knocked on the door and tried to sell you the same pension plan from the same company. Possibly not the same plan, because you don't find out what the plan is until you get the detail, but because it was from the same company, yes. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to know is that I am dogged by salesmen and telephone calls by people trying to sell me pension plans and I can't understand why people would try to sell you a pension plan that is supposed to be good for you in the future and yet it seems as though they're getting a hell of a lot out of it themselves and you said that you were going to um, sign up for a pension plan yourself so I'd like I'd like to you know know your views on whether it's worth paying into a pension plan with these companies or not. Depends on the company, it depends on the plan. It's certainly worth it if you want a pension. I work in what is ostensibly a non-pension industry. So if I want to have anything other than the state pension in my retirement, I require a private pension plan. Yeah, but it always seems to me that these, these fellows that are trying to sell pension plans yes. uh, are getting a, a lot more out of it than I am. And well, they're getting a lot more out of it than you are this week, and indeed probably next week. But in the longer term, if it's a good plan, it should suit you financially to have that plan. Obviously, the person that sells you the plan will get some commission for so doing, just like the pension company will take profit 
from the investments that they make on your behalf. And so a lot of people will benefit in a small way, collectively in a large way, but in a small way per pension, from your pension. But you also will benefit. It's only like investing money in a business. A lot of other people get benefit from it. The stockbroker gets benefit if you buy shares. The person that does the selling, the person that does the work on the ground, gets a commission. Yeah, from from the money I, that I pay in initially. Not from the money that you pay initially, actually, from the funds of the company, depending on how that particular plan or that particular pension company pays its money out. They can either pay a one-off fee to the individual, or alternatively, they can pay him on a drip feed so that your first two years of premiums, if you like, pay his commission, or her commission for that matter. Yeah, but what I can't understand is why um, is it, does it necess necessitate uh, that if you, if I was running a business, say, at the moment, and the business is doing well, and I was paying, say, 50, 100 pound a month into a pension plan, and then in 10 years' time, my business was struggling. Yes. Um, and I needed the money that I'd paid into that pension plan. Yes. But you can't get at it, you can't No, have you it. can't. There are limitations on that from the government's point of view. In order to give pension plans the tax incentive that they enjoy, the government has got to come to some kind of deal. If people start investing in pension plans on the basis of a short-term investment, then the government would consider whether to tax it in the same way as they tax other short-term investments. In order to earn and enjoy the tax benefits of the pension plan, the government wants to know that you're not going to use it for a short-term savings policy. So you think it is, a, it is a good thing to do, then? I think if you do not have an employer's pension. In other words, if your employment, because I, I, I work for Red Rose Radio, but I'm also a, on a peculiar kind of contract, unlike an employee, in the normal sense, I'm on a, a time-fixed contract. In other words, I start and finish a contract and then have to negotiate another one. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we are particularly peculiar types of employees. And you needn't laugh. All right? Mm. So for somebody in my position who isn't fully-fledged member of the company, I don't get a pension. So I can either not invest in a pension off my own bat and end up living on the state pension when I retire, or I can use some of the money that I earn now that I wouldn't spend, I'd just leave lying in the bank, to invest in the future for me. Very difficult for me, because I have to find a pension that I find socially acceptable, which is not easy. There are some, but it's not easy. Uh, is that money that you pay in the, into the pension fund, is that 100% secure until you're 65? Or, you know, if in... Nothing is 100% secure. Under the current regulations, a pension fund is as secure as anything can be. But it's not... There's no risk investment. But what, 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 what would happen in the event of, say, um, another world war or something another like Another world war, it may throw everything into havoc. Yeah. Okay. Um, what, well, but hopefully I'll get killed in it and won't be worried about the pension. Well, so would I like to be. But what, what, what would happen if... Well, I don't know what would happen if. The answer is that on balance, I decided to take out a pension. Now, I can't answer for you. You've got to make that decision for yourself. What, what about the profits that they guarantee? Is, is They don't guarantee any profits. They don't, no. They just say that it, it's projected. They guarantee a figure, and if I'm happy with that figure, I invest. If they also supply evidence of projections, then that's nice, but go for the guaranteed figure. But I cannot tell you, well, I can if I like, but I have no intention of telling you yay or nay to whether it's worth you having a pension. Not my job. But you think it, if it... It's it, not my yeah. job. I've got one. End of story. You've got one? I've... Well, obviously I have. Well, I've said good. so about four times. All right? If you've got one, then I'll have one. Well, I shouldn't bank on it being just as right for you, but it's a nice thought. How do, Barry? Hello. Hello. Am I correct in uh, assuming that you uh, detest, to say the least, door-to-door -door salesmen? I detest their occupation, and I detest them carrying out their occupation. Yeah. I'm sure some of them are very nice people, or have yet to meet one. Right. Uh, is advertising on the radio not very, very similar? No. It's not thrust upon you, rather than knocking at your door, at least you have the option. 
all right, you have the option of turning the radio off. That is exactly the option you have. But you might like the programme. You might well, like Sally Moon in the, the afternoon. The programme the program comes only because the advertising is there. Without the advertising, there's no programme. Correct, yes. Private, yeah. uh, private radio well, station. without the advertising, there's no program. If you like the advertise, if you like the program, then you've got to be prepared to pay the price of having that program. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, from your point of view, I suppose, is that you've got to be prepared to have the advertising because without it, you won't have the program. Well, I don't mind. I think the jingles are quite good. Actually. Well, that's irrelevant. But the truth uh, is, no, they're not an invasion of your privacy. Oh well, no, no. You can choose not to listen. You cannot choose not to have the man knock at your door. Yes, what, what I'm trying That's to work difference. it round to is... is well, I to hope you work it round there quickly, because it's now 20 to 2. ...is to yourself, in that you do a certain advert for a certain company. I do indeed. I do a number of adverts for a and number I of companies. Would, I would have thought that you, being of the opinion that you don't like people imposing themselves on other people... No, that isn't what I've said. What I've said is I don't like doorstep salesmen. I don't advertise for anyone, or I don't do adverts, write them, voice them produce them or anything else for companies that employ doorstep salesmen. I so, don't do it. No, I was just trying to compare it to... Well, you I wrote, to get in within the house I wrote an advertisement for a company called... I was there today, which is why I think of it, Fisherwick's Photographic of Haydock. And I went there today to discuss various things with them about their next campaign and one or two other things and pick up some camera equipment that I've bought. And they don't employ doorstep salesmen. Yeah. They had a great big three-day event. I wrote the advert for it. I voiced the advert on other radio stations. On this radio station, I'm not allowed for that particular advert. So it was done by somebody else. Mm -hmm. But I got paid a fee for that. Don't get me wrong, I didn't do it out of charity. I did it for money. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if Fishwicks of Haydock or all the others I do, British Telecom, Direct Windows, all the others I do, if those had been companies that employed doorstep salesmen, it you doesn't matter what they pay me, I won't do the advert. No. No. Right. Okay. I, okay. I, I just wondered what your principle was on that. My principle is, it. I do not like doorstep salesmen knocking on my door. Yeah, I can yeah. tolerate leaflets, I can tolerate all that stuff, because if you don't want to, you don't have to read it, yeah. and I accept that it is in some way an invasion of your privacy, but I can put up with that. Yeah. All right? Very good, thank Cheers, you. Cheers, Tara. I'll do to nobody, but Derek, you're next. Lindo's the Jewellers of Alverston invite you to view their superb range of wedding and engagement rings. Browse through their gold and silver jewellery department and see their fine selection of necklaces and bracelets and much more. There are watches from £5 up to the world-famous Jaeger range, alarm clocks to grandfather clocks, fine quality English crystal, silverware and bone china ornaments. Remember the name Lindo's for a super choice of holiday gift ideas. Look in at Lindo's of Market Street, Alverston. Broadbent and Boothroyds of Southport Great Summer Sale starts this Friday, June the 19th at 9am. There's a whole host of savings for everyone, but hurry, with sale prices like ours, they won't last long. So, come to Broadbent and Boothroyds of Southport this Friday and pick up your sale bargain. Saturday from 9 till 12, the chart of Lancashire's favourites will be played on Lancashire's favourite station. The Red Rose Top 40 on Red Rose Radio, in association with Red Rose Kitchens of Moorbrook Street, Preston. Manufacturers of quality fitted kitchens and the number one kitchen for your home. The chart is compiled by computer every week from sales throughout the North West. Catch the Top 40 this Saturday at 9am and discover which song's been made number one by you. How do you, Derek? Good evening, Alan. Good evening. Or I should say good morning at this you time. Should, indeed, you should. Uh, Alan, anyway, I, was at, uh, I was at a sports uh, dinner the other evening, and there was a well-known speaker there, known for his after-dinner speaking, and he was on about when he was in Australia. I'm telling you, it's a joke, clean one, no problem. <clears throat> now, Freddie Truman was running up the ball, right? And just as he was about to deliver... Can, can I just stop you? Yes. I don't like people that pinch after-dinner speakers' stories. Ah, well, that's... Uh, Fair comment then, Alan. All right, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I can't let you, because the guy makes his living telling them. How do... do Anne? Hello. 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 It's regarding a caller that you had a few minutes... Well, quite a while ago now. Um, she was on regarding her two sons that were drug addicts. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, she came to you with two problems. One, you gave her the answer to, or a suggestion for, and that was to ring the Merseyside Drugs Council. The other one, you didn't give her any help at all on. The other one wasn't a problem. She found it was. I know, but I can't do anything about that. If her son's gay, he's gay. Yeah, but is there no organisation that you could suggest that she should go to for herself? To I, help don't, I don't I don't think that? there is any organisation that I could suggest that she would ring. She wouldn't ring the gay switchboard. No, but some somebody else who might help her to come to terms with it. Well, there is nobody else. I mean, who else I do you think of? I could suggest one, but I don't think well, tell I'm allowed me about to. It. Well, you're allowed to. Don't give phone numbers and things like that, but tell me one. Well, the, the likes of Compass, which is also in the same building as um, the Merseyside Drugs Council. They're a counselling organisation. I know what Compass is. I know all about Compass. And I'm not going to comment any further. OK. I am aware they're there. All right. All right, yeah. Cheers. Fine, thank Ta you. Hey, Bye. listen, I tell you what, yeah. can you get me some details? Because it's a long time since I had contact with Compass. You obviously have contact. Yeah. Will you get them to send me some details? Yes, I will do, You're yeah. a wonderful woman. OK, Ta fine. Thanks, How do, David? Alan. Yes. If you know tomorrow morning, the Isle of Man government went to the British government, we don't want nothing to do with you. Yes. What could Britain do about it, nothing? Well, they could do a number of things. Knowing Mrs Thatcher, she'd probably invade. But they could do nothing legitimately, they could just say, fine, you don't want anything to do with us. The net result of that would be the Isle of Man would be bankrupt within a month. Oh, they? Well, they'd have to in involve themselves in all kinds of international negotiations, which they haven't got the money for. So they do depend a lot on Britain? They depend almost exclusively on Britain for their revenue of various different sorts. OK, thanks, Alan. OK. okay bye. I'll do... Steve. How do Alan? I don't think that marijuana should be made illegal, or should be illegal. Hang on, we're confused here. <laughs> you think marijuana should, should be... Not, should not be illegal. ...decriminalised? Yes. OK, why? Well, I don't think there's sufficient uh, reasons for it to be illegal. To make something illegal, you've got to have a reason. I don't think there's sufficient reason. Well, it, it doesn't... It doesn't actually work that way with drugs, be they naturally grown drugs or drugs of the other sort, and that is that they usually say, yes, you can use this, or leave it as it is, you can't. But why? Well, it is a drug, is it not? So is alcohol. Well, well then, you, let, let us not worry about all those things. Is it a drug, was the question? Yes. It is a mind-affecting drug. It does affect your mind. It's a mind-affecting drug? Yes, it has some benefits sometimes. It's a mind-affecting drug? Yes. Yeah. Why should we allow people to fiddle about with their minds like that? Well, I think that's up to the right of the individual. Provided Where does the right of the individual to injure him or herself end and the state's responsibility begin? Well, I think if they're a sane person, then they well, have, there are have those the that right would... to decide for themselves what is good for them and what isn't. Well, the great problem with sanity is that it's only based on whether you go about chopping chickens' heads off. Unfortunately, we're not talking about their sanity, we're talking about their ability to make a reasoned judgement. Now, not every individual not who everybody. comes into marijuana makes a region ju reasoned judgement. No, we think... employ governments to make reasoned judgments on our behalf. Big brother. Well, no, not Big Brother. It can, be, it can be perceived as Big Brother, but do you really expect every single individual in Britain to have a chemical degree or a degree in chemistry so they can assess whether they want to take arsenic or not, so they can assess whether they want to do all sorts of other things or not? No. Well, OK, yes, by all means, include all those other poisons too. We have a government. The responsibility of that government is to protect the community, amongst others. One of its responsibilities is to protect the community. And so they make to protect the community and members thereof. But what I'm trying to establish is that, yes, it is a drug, uh, and so is nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, uh, and all these other legal and I, drugs. And I yeah. actually believe that if alcohol was just discovered or invented today, yes, it would be banned. And nicotine. Do you, you agree? Absolutely. It would well, be banned, and I would be in favour of both those bans. The marijuana plant was growing wild in this country at one time. Uh, in fact, this was used mainly by the old witches, what we call witches. It doesn't take so it us has, any further. It has been used in this country longer than uh, certainly... Look, it, certainly I, am, I am currently reading a book which is the diary 
of William Wordsworth's sister. And I read a page today, because I keep this book in the bog, it's one of them that's, you know, you can read a day at a time, and it, it's in there. And I read today that on the 8th of October, and I've forgotten the year, but on the 8th of October she felt unwell, and she took laudanum. Great. The doctor gives you laudanum tomorrow, and I suggest you whip round to the medical health council and get him struck off. It's a, a very serious poison. Oh. They used to take it. So what I'm saying to you is just because people have been taking these things for years doesn't mean it's right that we should continue to do so. But, but there should be a reason for you, for you not to be able to do so. And not the reason is it's a mind-bending drug. But what... That, that That's the reason. then be taken, say, uh, as a side effect. For instance, I can give you... An, That's the an reason. Example. You said it, you if need I a reason. Give you an That's the reason. The benefits. Uh, it used to be used, What benefit? It used to be used uh, for the treatment of some chest complaints. David! No, it's not David, it's Steve. That's right, yes. Steve, they used to think laudanum was good for us. They used no, to no, think leeches they, were good but, for but us. But it was good. It, it, it did ease... Yeah, they thought it was good then too. <laughs> I can remember you. You used to go to the doctor. Well, I don't remember, but I've read. You used to go to the doctors. You used to have an idea. OK, if, have a if, bag of leeches. Oh, Roll it on if, your if, back. If, it's good, this is brilliant! Is, if, if that it did, was good, if that people got better. Trick, if that did the trick, then there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, it did it's, do the trick. It was all in the head. Now they just tell them, have an aspirin. <laughs> no, another no, pack no, of lies. No, you're saying that's in the head, no. It that's is in the head. If, if he has uh, a Look, physical... Look, it's a poisonous disease. drug. Poisonous? Yeah, poisonous. It's a poison. Poison? How many people have died to... Uh, do you it's a poison, for crying out loud. Are you stupid? It's a poison. It's in your bloodstream and it affects your head. It's a poison. It poisons the brain. I'm not saying it kills you. I'm saying it's a poison. So are you saying... It has adverse effects on you. I'm saying it's a poison. <laughs> does it have it, it adverse does to effects? Your, it does to your brain what your brain wouldn't do for itself. It's, does it have... Ad no, I disagree with that. Well, I don't. Uh, I would answer, back, I would answer that question. I would answer your question. Day. I would answer your question, does it have an adverse effect? Yes. No, no you said something that... And I, I would answer I, your question, wrong. yes. It, it, no, well, you, tell me what was wrong. You, you said Tell that me what was wrong. it would uh, affect your brain in some way that it wouldn't normally do to itself. Yes. Uh, now, there was a documentary, I don't know if you saw it. Well, let uh, me just ask a, you a, a question. While, a let while me just ask you a question, because we, we haven't got a lot of time, so let me ask yeah. you a question. Are you saying that it has no effect? No, I didn't say that. Are you saying that the brain would do for itself what the stuff does for it? It can do in certain circumstances. Oh, yes. in certain circumstances. No, but I'll you try cannot, to explain but you to cannot, I don't want to know, because I know what you're trying to say, and what I'm telling you is, when you use that commodity, you do something to your brain that at that moment your brain would not do for itself. Is that correct or false? Is that correct it is or false? It's easier to obtain that. Is that correct or false? It is easier is that to correct or false? Not every time, no. Not every no. time? Are you telling me that sometimes it doesn't work, or sometimes yeah. your brain would do it for itself without it? Yes. I see. So you're saying your brain, sometimes, you can not bother with marijuana, you can just sit there and say, OK, brain, no, no, I want to go for a walk around. It's not that simple, no, but no. But you Look, also Steve, me to explain Steve, Steve if, you're telling, if you're telling me that you, A, cannot predict the effect, if you're telling me, B, that no, your brain can it's sometimes it's induce that effect without control, then let me say to you, it's a waste of damn time. No, Whether it's no, good no. or bad is irrelevant, it's a waste of damn time. No, you can't. Get off. How do, Sean? Ian, how do? Hello, Alan. Yes, Yeah, Sean's I'd like next. to talk about... My Hello? Go on. Yes, get on with it. Yeah, I'd like to talk about Margaret Thatcher Go on, and her policy quick. on arms. Be very quick. Yeah, uh, well, I think she's hypocritical because she's talking to people like um, the Saudi Arabian king. I can't... Uh, king Fahid and all that. Uh, doesn't matter, go on. And uh, he's just murdered 47 people. And she says she won't talk to the Russians. Who's murdered 47 people? King Fahid. What did he murder them for? Stealing. That's not murder. Petty crime, That's you know, not things like that. That's not murder. Well, it's the same thing, No, isn't it isn't it? the same thing. It's the same thing in that people end up dead. Yeah, well... I but it's not murder. You call it murder, it's not murder. He, he killed them, okay, he killed or them. his government and his judicial authorities killed them legally. That's not murder. How do Sean? Hello, Alan. Yeah, I'd like to speak about uh, Nuss's low pay. How to? Um, uh, Nuss's low pay. And what you think about it? Nurses low pay. Nurses low pay. Oh, nurses low yeah, pay. Yeah, my Scottish accent. I think it's crap. I think they should be paid a lot more money. Great. Who tells? Yeah, what I'm thinking after seeing what I saw tonight on telly, 
you know about. We've not got a lot of time. Do you think they get low pay? Yes, I do. Do you think they should get more pay? I think they do. Let's get that out of the way. How do John? Last caller tonight. What do you want? Good morning, Alan. Good morning. You have to be quick. Right, very quickly. You had a guy on before talking about pensions, and a popular misconception came across in so much as. Uh, people tend to think when you put money into a pension fund that it's locked up for a long time. Since the Finance Act in 1984, that is no longer the case. You can't get it back. You can only get it moved. No, you can. In fact, there is now what they call a borrow-back facility. Borrow-back, but you can't get it back? No, you can get up to 50% of the value of your fund, um, which is, in effect, an unsecured loan. The interest is much more advantageous than you would ever get from a high street bank or any other lender. But you have to pay it back because it's a loan? No, you pay only the interest on it. You the pay the interest loan on it? itself, the capital, is repaid out of your pension plan when it matures. So let's, let us just say I go along and I get myself a pension and in 20 years' time it's got a, a face value, uh, a investment value, if you like, of 20 grand. Yeah. I can borrow 10,000. All That's I have correct. to do is pay the interest on it. That's right. How long for? That until such times as either you wish to repay the capital, if Quite. it becomes available to you, Quite. or the pension plan matures. So I pay interest for the rest of me natural till I get to 65. That's correct. Which but could, the interest which could is be 30 not... years. Yeah, I know the point you're coming to. Yeah, that's a lot of money for borrowing money that way. That's right, but in actual fact what happens, the interest that you are paying back is less than a bank rate, and the interest is in effect you're paying it back to yourself because it goes into your own pension plan and accumulates more profits for you're yourself. You're telling me the pension the fund the gets day. absolutely nothing out of it? I'm hardly going to believe you. It gets the normal administration charges that you would pay in any course. The <laughs> charges are not multiplied. In fact, I understand your brother-in-law works for a insurance company. I won't name one. My brother-in-law? Is it your brother-in-law in Liverpool? Oh, my brother... Yeah, well, he used yeah. to. He used to work for the Royal, but he now works... Oh, you're advertising. Well, why not? My brother-in-law <laughs> works there. But he, he now lives in the Isle of Man. Oh. He's been poached. I he's think been he's been poached. He might... more tax advantages. Yes. He will bear off what I've he said. He may well. Right. I'm sure he will. He may well. He was actually on house repossessions. <laughs> <laughs> a miserable Ooh, toady. What a meanie. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, he said, if you get behind on your mortgage, I'll, I'll get him to stop getting you out. Honestly, he said, I know all the tricks. <laughs> anyway, he worked for the Royal. And now he works in the Isle of Man and lives in the Isle of Man. I don't know what he does there now, actually. I don't know whether he's with the same company. I know he... Uh, he was approached and it poached. It may well say. be a subsidiary of the it same company. Probably because is. there is a different probably legal is. system. Anyway, the royal on um, everything. They just bought oysters. I've got to go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Cheers. Bye bye. Please listen to my ditty. It may not be very witty, nor even slightly funny, but it will help save you money. For me, from cradle to grave, I aim to shop and save. I buy out I need for next to out indeed. There's meat and veg and cheese and picks and booze and clothes and cars and sweets and pigs and pet food and household things. So shop and save a load down Blackpool's Waterloo Road in the market they call new and over at Road the M2. Thank you. Poetry in prices from the New Market and M2 Market. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. In-car telephone systems by Ford Telecommunications are in stock now at John Wilding of Garstang. For a full demonstration, ring John Wilding on Garstang 6363. John Wilding! Ah, this is the life. A bargain holiday, thanks to the late booking desk at National Travel World. Oh, we saved ourselves a fortune. Not only that, but they gave us a microwave for only £79. I could have had 10% discount off any item over £100 at Centro, but I'd rather have the microwave. Oh, so that's why you're reading a cookery book now, is it? Well, you won't be doing any cooking for another two weeks. We're on holiday. Oh, yes, I will. I brought the microwave with us. If you want a last-minute bargain holiday plus a microwave for only £79, book before the 30th of June at National Travel World's late booking desk. Rotters, the Northwest's only big night out. Every Friday and Saturday from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Enjoy the time of your life with the best in music at Rotters. The best in hem party nights at Rotters. With four bars, four dance floors, and a better party night atmosphere. Check out Rotters, Oxford Street, Manchester, this Friday or Saturday. Rotters, Bungalore, and a whole lot more. It's bigger, it's better, it's Rotters. Ring Manchester 236-4934. Manchester 236-4934. Rotters.
Edmondson's of Blackburn, a far, far better furniture store. For lounge, dining room and bedroom furniture. For famous names and quality carpets. For all home furnishings. Edmondson's offers choice. Edmondson's gives first class service. And Edmondson's guarantees value for money. All round a far, far better furniture store. A Darwin Street, Blackburn. A far, far better furniture store. Edmondson's. Shop within the superb surroundings of Preston's Fishergate Shopping Centre. Conveniently located next to the railway station, the centre has many high-quality stores, plus the New Look Debenhams, Asda, Under the Clock Restaurant, and the largest surface car park in Preston. Come to the Fishergate Shopping Centre. It's Preston's most sophisticated shopping experience. When you think about cars, to think of John Wilding. This is Ian Stringer from John Wilding is letting you know that we still have new Fords at old prices. They won't last long though. So for generous discounts, top pilot strange allowances and Ford at pre-increased prices, it's got to be John Wilding's on the A6 at Garstang. Don't forget our fine selection of used cars all backed by Ford's A1 or A2 warranty. When you think about cars, it pays to think of John Wilding. John Wilding! Stop clattering about now, Webster. I'm ready to do me talking bit up to news. I forgot to put the old good night children on, so you just have to sing it amongst yourselves. I shall be back tonight at ten. Webster is with you. Poor souls. You've got him till six o'clock in the morning. I don't know what you've done, but it must have been something terrible. However, he'll be with you two till six. Try to stay awake. The lad weeps as he brought the kettle in tonight. He comes in here, he's like a whirlwind. A whirlwind, great long shanks. Anyway, I'm going now. See you tonight at 10. Ta ra! Two o'clock news. This is Andrew Turner. Detectives are hunting a vicious rapist who lured a five year old girl from her school playground. The youngster was taken from the school in Portsmouth to a nearby flat and subjected to a terrifying 30 minute ordeal. Michael O'Neill reports. The noses of school staff in broad daylight. It's thought the rapist, a thin man with brown hair, convinced the child her mother was close by. Then he forced her into a nearby house and raped her. Detective Superintendent Roger Hodinot says it was a disgusting attack. It can only be described as horrendous because the girl is five years old. I think that, in most of society's eyes, is horrendous. Forty detectives are involved in the hunt for the rapist and police fear he could strike again. International economists are warning that inflation is set to rise in Britain and growth is likely to slow down. The Organisation of Economic Cooperation and Development says the trends could endanger the government's hopes for continuing falls in the rate of unemployment. The OECD report came on the same day as the news that unemployment in Britain has fallen below 3 million in the biggest monthly drop for 40 years. Freemasons are condemning a Church of England report that casts doubt over whether a true Christian can also belong to a Masonic Lodge. The Grand Lodge, the governing body of Britain's Freemasons, says claims that certain of its rituals are evil and blasphemous are untrue. Curator John Hamill says the fact that many clergymen are also Masons proves there's no conflict with religion. Freemasonry, if you like, is, is a set of rules for, for leading um, a good and decent life. It's, it's a code of conduct. Um, it also tries to promote toleration. It is certainly not a religion. It is not attempting to replace religion. It doesn't offer any sacraments, and it certainly doesn't offer any form of salvation. A Briton has been sent to prison for seven years in Sweden for his part in a drug smuggling operation. 37-year-old Kay Forbes Mitchell from Aberdeen was arrested in March along with British Army Captain Simon Hayward. Mitchell admitted the smuggling, but Captain Hayward, who is being held on remand, has denied involvement. A Surrey pensioner who filled her house with poodles to keep her company could face prosecution from the RSPCA. More than 30 sick dogs were found in her home, along with the rotting carcasses of 10 others. Jane Askew reports. Firemen fighting a blaze at the pensioner's home in Lingfield called in the animal charity when they discovered the remains and smelt the stench of dead dogs. RSPCA officers arrived to find the carcasses and 34 live poodles in what they say was a state of neglect. They carted away those still alive and are giving them urgent veterinary care. Now they're considering charging the pensioner with causing unnecessary distress to animals. Jane Askew, IRN, Surrey.
A band of hippies have been given until noon today to leave Forestry Commission land near Stonehenge. Police have warned them that they're contravening the Public Order Act. The hippies have been camping in the woods since being moved off land at another site near Devizes. Independent Radio News. God, is it that time again?